Welcome to the Unity Storage Processor, or SP, replacement demonstration. For more detailed instructions, I always refer to the applicable procedure on support.emc.com. To begin, we're going to log into Unisphere using the admin account. Let's take a look at the system view and then select the enclosures tab. Here we can see that the I.O. modules in slot 1 of storage processors A and B are degraded. Storage processor B, or SPB, I.O. Module 1 is reporting an asymmetrical configuration, and SPA, I.O. Module 1 is reported as missing. In this hypothetical scenario, the I.O. Module in SPA has been reseeded and replaced already, and it has been determined that SPA is the root cause and should be replaced. We'll begin by navigating to the System Service page, and then select Service Tasks. In order to replace SPA, we must first put it in service mode. Confirm that the Enter Service Mode button for SPA is highlighted, and then click Execute. When prompted, enter the service password. Entering service mode stops I.O. on the SP so that it can be safely removed. Wait until the SP fault light is flashing alternating amber and blue before removing the storage processor. Here we can see that SPA is in service mode. Also notice that the unsafe to remove LED is illuminated on SPB. Make sure that you do not remove an SP with the unsafe to remove LED illuminated. Begin by rotating the power cord retention bale to the left and remove the power cord for SPA. Make sure any network or I.O. module cables are labeled and then remove them. Do not remove any cables from SPB. Pull the torque limit screw handle out of the SP assembly and turn it counterclockwise to release SPA from the DPE. As the handle is turned, the SP extracts out of the enclosure. When the outward movement stops, use the handle to pull the SP outward enough to grasp the sides with both hands. Pull it fully out from the DPE. Place the SP with top side upward on a clean, flat, static-free work surface. Wait for the SP LEDs to turn off to ensure that the SP has completed its power off after removal from the DPE. Begin transferring the reusable SP parts to the replacement SP. Start with the power supply. Push and hold the orange release tab to the left and grasp the power supply by its handle. Remove it by pulling it from the SP assembly. Align it with the slot in the new SP assembly. Push the power supply into the SP until it clicks into place. Next, transfer each installed I.O. module to the exact same slot in the new SP assembly. Pull the trigger mechanism on the I.O. module handles to release them Align the module with the empty slot of the replacement SP and carefully push the module into the slot. When the I.O. module appears seated, push and release the small button on the handle. If the button remains in, the module is fully seated. Now we can start on the internal parts. While pushing down the blue release button, slide the top cover rearward approximately one half inch until it stops. Lift the top cover upward and remove it from the SP assembly. Press in on the tabs on both sides of the airflow baffle. Lift the airflow baffle upward and remove it from the SP. Start by transferring the memory modules, or DIMMs. To remove each DIMM, depress the two retaining tabs downward to free the module from its slot. Touching only the module's outside edges, align the module with the connector in the replacement SP and then firmly push the DIMM straight down into the connector. When you hear a snap and feel the connector latches click into place, it is fully seated. Repeat for any additional DIMMs, making sure to transfer them into the exact slots that they previously occupied. Locate the internal SSD, also known as an M.2 SATA board, and rotate the retaining knob counterclockwise until it is free from the mounting stud. Lift the end of the SATA board at a slight angle, and then remove it completely from the slot. Insert the terminal end of the SATA board into the slot on the replacement SP motherboard. Place the latch retaining screw into the mounting hole and secure the SATA board to the motherboard by turning the screw clockwise. Begin transferring the cooling fans. First, disconnect the cooling fan power cable from the motherboard. Press in on the blue release button on the front of the module and lift the cooling fan upward from the motherboard. Position the fan so that the rear is angled down into the fan mounting position. Press downward on the cooling fan to lock it into position. Connect the cooling fan power cable to the connector on the motherboard. Repeat for all the other cooling modules, making sure to transfer them to the same position in the replacement SP. 
Next, locate the BBU and the cable that connects it to the motherboard. On the battery on bus module, press the release tab on the cable connector and disconnect it. Then, using one hand, press out on the two retaining tabs at the base of the BBU, lift the front of the BBU at an angle and remove it from the motherboard. To install the replacement BBU, angle the bottom end of it into the housing on the motherboard and then press down on the front of the module to secure it in the two retaining tabs at the base of the module. Now you can connect the motherboard battery cable to the connector on the BBU module. Next, align the two retaining clips on the airflow baffle with the slots on the side of the SP and push downward on it to secure it to the SP. Position the top cover over the SP assembly and align it with the slots in the sides at the rear of the assembly. Pull the top cover forward approximately one half inch to secure it in place. Align the SP assembly with the enclosure slot and slide it into the slot until it stops. Turn the orange torque limit screw handle clockwise until you hear a click sound from the handle. The click sound indicates the torque limit is reached and the SP is seated fully in the enclosure. Push the orange torque limit screw handle into the SP assembly until you hear a click again. The click indicates the screw handle is secured in the assembly. The SP will begin to boot into the service mode. Reconnect each I.O. module cable and network cable into the same port from which it was removed. Connect the AC power cord to the power supply and secure the cord with the retention bale. Here we can see that the SP is in the service mode with the SP fault LED flashing alternating amber and blue. Now we can log back into Unisphere to confirm the replacement. Let's log back into Unisphere to check the status. Now that we are logged back into Unisphere, we can see we have some hardware issues. These are expected errors. Let's click on the hardware error to confirm. Here we can see SPA and SPB are reporting errors. If we select SPA, we can see that it's reporting that it is in service mode. If we click on SPB, we can see that it's reporting an unsafe to remove condition. Since these are both expected errors, we can now go back to the service task page and reboot SPA. This action will reboot SPA into normal mode. Select Reboot for SPA and then click on Execute. When prompted, enter the service password. Note that it may take up to 20 minutes for the system to complete its reboot and return to normal. After approximately 20 minutes, log out and log back into Unisphere to refresh the view. Let's check the system status by navigating to the System view and then select the Enclosures tab. We can see now that SPA has completed its reboot and is operating normally. Now let's check the Alerts page. Here we can see the alerts associated with an SP fault and the replacement procedure. Most notably at the top, we see the storage system now operating normally. To complete the storage processor replacement task, we are going to acknowledge all the alerts associated with this procedure. This completes the Unity storage processor replacement demonstration.